Um, so let's start. Um, last week I've been reviewing PRs and doing some clean clean up, and also try to drop the uh, to wrap up my PR to to add the log log free queue to the uh, shard shard queue in agent store, and also create some clean up PRs. And uh, that's me. Um, Aaron. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I was working on the uh, sister side uh, on uh, integrating uh, IOCTLF control interfaces on, on the sister framework side, actually. So uh, the patch is submitted and uh, yeah, some reviews uh, submitted. I need to work on the further versions. Yeah, that is from my side. Okay. Actually. Sorry, was that saying you were submitting the ZNS stuff to sister? Yeah, yeah, sister. Yes, 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 yes. So, cool. On the same, on the same uh, direction, yes. Yes, I think Aaron's PR is on the on view on the uh, C-Star um, discussion group. Yeah, yeah, yes. And to me. Uh, last week I reviewed some PRs and fixed uh, two uh, runtime exception. Uh, one is the compare X attribute, one is PGNLS. And uh, um, so currently the the debug build and uh, release build can also be tested by FIO and uh, Redis Bench. And the release build, I uh, still um, meet the uh, add pin, uh, LBH add pin uh, issue. So I'm trying to uh, debug on it currently. That's all. So that problem only sufficient. You said you're hitting that on, on release only on release. Yeah. Have some question. So release build when you, when I disable the debug output and it quickly meet the uh, add ping unable to. Cool. Um, yeah. So I think C star is far enough along now that I'd like bugs filed. Um, do you want to file a bug for it, along with any relevant information, just anything for reproducing it that might make it easier? Uh, okay, for me. okay. Yeah, I will review the the, the bug. Cool. That way, um, I expect other people will be hitting it as well. It'll make it easier for us to coordinate efforts. Sure. And and you don't have this same issue on the on the release build, right? The, uh, uh, I just mentioned that when we uh, debug output, it will run slowly. So it uh, when you test uh, with small time, it couldn't meet this problem. But okay. when you disable the output, it will quickly meet this problem. I see. I, I, I mean, this isn't real surprising to me that I, I expect to find bugs in that subsystem for a while. It's just a matter of figuring out what it is. Riddick. Uh, hello. Uh, I'm working on the uh, Crimson backend. Uh, this week I sent. Uh, I found uh, the root cause and sent uh, a patch fix uh, for the issues uh, in trashing test. Uh, there was uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, core dumps. Sorry, uh, a lot of uh, set faults uh, around uh, the PD backend load uh, metadata, which turned out to be caused uh, by the uh, by the uh, wrong casting in alien star here is uh, the pr apart uh, uh, from that uh, some improvements around mostly around uh, around the bugs uh, like dumping uh, the content of uh, prot's uh, self info in the support handler and uh, the Asset movable thing uh, that I hope could be useful to tackle uh, some weird and surprising behavior when uh, of C++ when it comes uh, to moving uh, moving actually a const qualified variable which might run a bit different constructor that somebody likely uh, would uh, uh, would expect. Uh, more info in the uh, in the uh, commit message. Uh, right now, 
I'm taking a look uh, on another uh, problem, which is uh, which seems to be very tightly cap, which seems to be about uh, peering. Uh, one of uh, acting set members got uh, uh, one of OSDs got stuck uh, in the one of PGs got stuck on one of the OSDs uh, got stuck uh, in the started slash spray uh, state uh, when uh, he did get uh, uh, the lease. Uh, message which cause which is causing uh, which is causing uh, the transition the crash state in the crash session right. which message uh, the event is M Liz writing down in the chat ah. oh oh what is the M Liz message uh, you guys go on and go figure out what that is. Yeah. Working on that right now. Uh, and some tiny uh, PRs about uh, like uh, uh, like removal of some unnecessary copying uh, do, on, around the uh, get uh, object context stuff. That is actually a side effect, uh, a side quest. Of the uh, of the load, the PG bucket load metadata investigation. That's me. Just a quick note on the, the PR work 42100. I, I encourage all the team to take a look at it because sometimes if we forget to 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 add the mutable specifier for a continuation, the 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 application still compiles, but we might miss the opportunity of the optimization because when we copy a uh, sorry, we when we capture a um, a variable, the without the uh, mutable specifier, we end up with a uh, immutable variable, and when we try to move away from it. In the continuation embedded in that very con continuation, which just fails, it creates a copy. If if that if, if that variable is copyable, so and the compiler does not complain in that case, as long as that that variable is copyable. Yeah, Sometimes and we just uh, take it for granted. Uh, it's uh, funny because many times I uh, I wanted to strip the mutable keyword down because I felt it's unnecessary. Uh, even if the original author uh, were the change, of, 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 of a change where the std mutable was highly recommended, highly, highly usable, it's still uh, quite likely that somebody in the future, uh, for the sake of cleaning up, will take the mutable specifier uh, out of the, of the Lambda. And the assertion is the way to prohibit. Uh, it's actually a better way than committing uh, to uh, to an, uh, to avoid such situation. It's supposed to fail the build. Yeah. In, our, in this very case, it's not compulsory, but it's, but uh, for the performance case, it's uh, it's uh, it's better to have the mutable. Yeah, and I think it's even worse because some build will uh, move the can move, successfully move the uh, shared intrusive pointer without mutable on the some build will, uh, will copy that without mutable. So the, the behavior is different. Jonathan. Hi, everyone. First, uh... Just to let you know, I started uh, going over CVs and we'll be start, uh, starting interviewing uh, interns for the team. We have uh, an opening and uh, started go getting the CVs. Uh, that's one thing. Now, there is uh, a PR that is waiting uh, both Kifu's Yacht your tests uh, separated from uh, uh, who was that uh, separated from uh, 
he goes and uh, comments or approvals. It's, it's been there for quite a lot of time and uh, I think it's a good idea to, to get it merged. Um, I'm working mostly on debugging some issues with the help of NIA and SAM, um, issues that came up during uh, tutorial tests. That's it. Um, I'm tr trying to review the PR of a uh, 40984. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, good. Thanks. Sam? Uh, the interruptible future thing went in and appears to have only caused some trouble. So I fixed the obvious stuff last week. Um, I put out a PR that ought to fix the bug Zhuihan was talking about, where the OSD maps were showing up and crashing, or the OSD map wasn't present on the OSD was crashing up. It was a generic, it was in a specific case of the generic bug of C-Store wasn't respecting transaction ordering yet. I even left myself a comment to that effect. I just forgot about it. Um, so I've fixed that now uh, once that PR merges. Um, each C-Store collection has a mutex associated with it. So any particular placement group will have to finish the prepare phase before it can submit the next one, which is fine. We can do a very tiny bit better but it's probably not gonna be worth the complexity because this is only per PG. So if you have 100 PGs, you can still have 100 things preparing at once. It's just that any, and um, it'll still pipeline once it's been submitted to the device itself. So it's probably fine for the foreseeable future. Um, note that this does not prevent conflicts. Conflicts can still happen because different PGs can be submitting at the same time. Um, let's see, that's it. Um, Still looking for the least thing. M release, you mean? Yeah, I've almost got it. I'm just trying to figure out why, what the most mm, obvious okay. guess is. Oh, yeah. uh, last week I modified the exchange placement manager uh, to address uh, Yingxin and the Sam's uh, concerns. Uh, right now, the, exploit, uh, the exchange placement manager uh, determines uh, the extend physical address uh, at the time of actually writing it. Uh, and uh, the rewritten uh, extends are persisted to the underlying disk uh, before the uh, update of the LBA tree happens. Um, uh, last week I also uh, rebased uh, the, the extend placement manager code against the master. Uh, and right now uh, there seems to be multiple uh, Interruption condition leaks uh, within the the post uh, the, the post uh, uh, rebase version of my code. Uh, right now, I'm I'm trying to fix it, and uh, after that, I think I can push the PR. Uh, that's all for me. So hopefully, you could update your PR with the rebased version, which addresses the leak leakage issue, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, I think I'm also working on it and find some you know, leak issue and uh, I think I I think implement some fix and, uh, and I will push out soon to to let you know. If, okay, if thanks. You... So you you are working on the on the PR based on the math yeah. with with the Shihan No. Uh, I think it's some fix, fixes at cache layer, uh, which oh, there's also different thing, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll take a look at that. Uh, uh Last week, uh, I'm uh, reading your transaction validation PRs, and uh, I found some issues at cache layer, and uh, I'm working on it and now. Uh, uh, I, I will. I haven't sent like five more commits about the fix, and I, I think I will send out today, and uh, and I will uh, work on the following PR to uh, to about the extent placeholder 
uh, feature. I think it's also related to uh, the leak of uh, transaction validate. Mm -hmm. And uh, last week, I, I also started to work on improve, improving metrics to C store. I, I just added initial metrics, uh, and, and uh, that's all for me. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on the placement? Uh, I don't quite get it. Uh, okay. I paste the PR here. So, uh, Shihan had, I think Shihan made some issue because some transaction is not correctly invalidated because the invalidation is not, uh, pro uh propagated correctly in some uh, corner cases. So I think that you can refer to this PR. Okay. Cool. Where do we get more details? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I'm out next week. Uh, Ronan, that means I won't be doing the Rados QI. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for the help. Um, for the, we can talk about the Lee's thing. Radek, if you're still there. Yes, I am. I posted. Uh, I uh, posted uh, a link uh, to the gist uh, with uh, some logs. No, uh, so the the idea is the purpose of this message is that um, do you know about the uh, the read hole? About what three? The read hole. Read, read hole. hole. Ah, yeah, read so hole. Okay. Read hole. Before about 2018, there was a detail. In or whatever stage text stuff, there was a detail in Rados that we knew about for a super long time, which is that for a period of time after an interval change, a replica could continue, or a, a client and a single isolated primary could continue forming reads even if the acting set changed. Do you see why? Not sure. So Writes would be impossible because the primary would attempt to replicate the rights to the to its replicas, and one of its sure. replicas must have been contacted by the new primary. The writes aren't possible, but reads are, because we oh, don't run okay. reads through the replicas. So sure. for that reason, in a very specific network isolation situation, it was possible for a client to get stale reads. Um, so the fix for that is to use a read lease. So when we activate a PG prior to accepting any reads, we say to our replicas, swear to me that you will not let anyone else be primary until this lease expires, which is whatever, 30 seconds by, uh, def oh, okay. by default. There are some mechanisms to cancel it early in conservative cases where we know it's safe. But in general, that means that before we can accept reads and writes, we ha the primary has to s maintain this lease, lease act message sequence with its replicas on a 10 second basis. So forget the exact frequency. So what's going on here is almost certainly the case that either you're getting an mlease message from a prior interval or the activation message and the mlease message are changing order and you're processing yeah. the mlease message before the activation has committed. I spotted so, uh, activation message in the reset state uh, and I wonder whether we already, uh, whether we preserved the order uh, of, uh, of transitions and message handling. Yeah, so that's what you need to be careful of. By the way, this isn't just true of these messages, it's true of literally every peering message. Peering, the, the in general primary to replica peering message subsystem relies on ordering. We do this all the, all, all the time. Lots of messages have this uh, de dependency. So in general, you're not allowed to change the order of peering messages sent from the primary to the replica. They have to be processed in order. And all the way from the message handling stack through to putting it through the PG, through to putting it into the, the event queue for the peering state uh, machine. All of that has to be pre uh, preserved. So that's probably where your bug is. You're going to want to add some debugging so you can tell where things got enqueued and dequeued. And make sure that it's coming from the epic you think it's coming from. Because if it's coming from the past, you have a, you have a different bug. I see. Uh, I already, put, uh, I already uh, added the debugs and uh, uh, just uh, spawned. 
a new uh, a new uh, debug run on tautology. The good news is, whatever this bug is, it's probably true of a bunch of other stuff too. So this will just fix like a whole category of problem. Yeah, it's uh, now it's uh, the most com commonly uh, appearing problem I'm I'm seeing in the in the backhand runs. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, thanks. Let me know if you need any other help. Sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the explanation. It it shows it it put huge amount of light on the problem. Thanks. Tim, uh, I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, is the red? What do you mean? Is it red hole, right? Yeah, as in there's a hole, a hole into which a reed could fall. I suppose is the metaphor. Okay. I guess okay. it doesn't work as well. Anyway, for whatever reason, that's what it ended up being called. It's not an uncommon property of storage systems, to be honest. Um, even in Ceph, it's pretty difficult to trigger it in real life. You'd have to get mildly creative. But in very small systems, it's a little bit possible. So, so you, where you only so have a few nodes, it's more likely to happen in the in the in the small. It's more likely to happen in the largest cluster. It's it's likely to happen in a situation where a client is only talking to one OSD. In a large cluster, that's basically never true. A client's talking to hundreds of OSDs. Um, it's a bug either way, and it's good that it's fixed. I'm just trying to explain the scenario in which it can happen and why the fix that exists works the way it does. Okay. There are some PG states associated with it too that can delay peering a little bit in um, edge cases, but those are just time delays. They're not problems. Why the requirement that the client will be talking to one OSD, it, because if it's it talking, it shouldn't be just to clarify. It shouldn't be one OSD per one PG. What the actual requirement is that all of the OSDs that the client is talking to are all in the same network bubble, and none of them can talk to the outside world. And they all agree on the OSD map, and they all got partitioned at the same time. Because otherwise, the client will get newer OSD maps from whichever the newest one is. And they'll start trying to talk to the monitor, which won't work. So they'll realize they're 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 down. I so see. basically, the the client and the OSDs all have to share this like fantasy that the rest of the cluster still thinks they're fine. Okay, because of the which OSD is possible, but rare. Because of the yeah. maps that uh, will update the client. Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. As soon as the client talks to any OSD that knows that a map change happened, the client will immediately stop talking to the partitioned OS, OSD. Okay, good. Thanks. And similarly, if the OSD finds out in any way that it's partitioned, it will refuse to talk to anyone. In other words, the, the that part of the network is a is practically isolated from the rest of the cluster. Right, because and in a way that, it. and in a way that doesn't trigger any of the other behaviors. But to be clear, this is actually fixed in current stuff via the MLEs, um, MLEs ACK messages. When a primary, when a PG, when an OSD becomes primary for a PG, it obtains a promise that its replicas will not um, let another OSD become. Uh, well, what actually happens is I think they put something into the OSD info that gets propagated to the new primary that says don't accept reads before X. Unless you hear from the original uh, primary, it's like a, another form of a heartbeat, right? It is, in it's, fact, very much like a heartbeat. It didn't get uh, piggybacked on the original heartbeat system for reasons, which mm. I'm forgetting. I think it, I can't remember. That was a thought, but it didn't end up being the best way to do it. But yeah, it's like a heartbeat, just on a longer time interval. Thank you, Stan. Um, anything <clears throat> else? Okay, talk to you later, and have a good one. Thank Bye. you. Later. See you later. Bye. Bye. See Bye. you.